Okay, I'm back again. I had a request to do an analog, a deal on a programming an analog, setting up an analog card in FC6A. So I'm going to give you a run through on that, <clears throat> on an input and output. And then I'll also show you how to set it up through an HMI so you can have a display on an HMI showing your analog. Um, the process of doing that, I'm going to have to set up communications between the HMI and the PLC. So you're going to get a couple of little different lessons here all in one, I think. <clears throat> um, excuse me. If there's any questions, just put them in the comments and I'll answer them if I can. If I can, I'll try to find the answer for you. Uh, let me open up WinLDR here. Let's get this open. I'm going to drag it over there where you can see it. All right. So one of the first things we got to do is set up communications. So... Go to add this right here. Do you see how? I, let me go back. All right, home. Try not to do this too fast because I hate it when people do fat stuff fast in front of me and I can't understand. All right, here's your home screen. When you have FC6A, I got a from a default PLC down here. You can change the PLC type to whatever PLC you have. Mine's FC6A. You can. Uh, actually go to configuration and you can change that to a default where it'll open up with whatever PLC you commonly use. You can set it as your default in case you want to know that. <clears throat> if you don't want to know that, now you know it anyway. Okay. So I have an FC6A PLC. I want to set up my communication this real quick like. So I'll go online. Let's go set up. All right. Ethernet. Okay, right now I got all zeros right here in this IP. All right. I want to set as default because as default it's five. Your HMI you'll see later is default at six probably. If I get to that part, I'll show you. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so you're if you're trying to get into this, it's one nine two one six eight one dot five, pretty much. Anyway, so that I got to set it for Ethernet communication between this now. Okay. All right, module configuration. That's just that little tab right there. Click on that. Here's your FC6A right here. It shows you a picture of it. Okay. When you fill in tag editor <clears throat> over here, it will fill all this in for you. So when you go to module configuration, it'll have your inputs and outputs, and you can move all this up where you can see it if you want. See what you have in there. That way you'll see what your addresses are. <clears throat> Okay, over here to the right, I see y'all are not seeing all that for some reason. Let me, uh, let me see if I can spread this out where you can see it a little better. All right, get it in the screen. <clears throat> all right. hell's going on there all right there you go all right now you can see <clears throat> anyways tag editor will fill this in for you if you want and you get scroll bar of course you can move it up and down but this will tell you what you actually have in that fc6a how many inputs and how many outputs okay i want to add some analog cards so i'll go over here to the right to this menu over here and go to analog modules modules <clears throat> an fc6a a j2 is a two point you need to drag it right on over there okay when i get to that that's an analog input card <clears throat> okay i'm going to take an analog input from a field device basically like maybe a temperature sensor or something like that or a flow meter that's going to input a signal back to my plc via like a four to twenty or a zero to ten or you know, zero to twenty milliamps most common that i use is a four to twenty milliamp <clears throat> okay anyways while that's highlighted you can't do it while one of these are highlighted highlight that click configure okay configure over here this is analog one that was a two-point card so it's all it has is two points you got one zero and one <clears throat> okay you have to pick your signal type this is where it let, you can pick between zero to ten minus ten to plus ten zero to twenty 4 to 20. All right, 4 to 20 is what I use a lot. All right. Here you can 
binary data or you can do an optional range so say you have something that has a temperature that's zero to 500 degrees Oop, I didn't do that good Uh, 500 degrees <clears throat> so it'll actually show 0 to 500 degrees all right or you can leave it 4 to 20 and leave it binary just like it is and it'll have the scale for what you're using all right your data register this is where it's going to actually <clears throat> send the information it's going to hold the information from this device that's in the field that's coming back it's going to hold it in the data register in this PLC <clears throat> That you tell it to right here's where you tell it where you want it to hold it at so you have to click on that just like it did click on the box go here to a data register just pick one you have open okay so now we have data register zero it automatically signs them you have zero and one for this one two and three for this one it's showing one and three but you're actually getting data zero and one two and three <clears throat> okay all right so those are set up so now pretty much is all you have to do is wire this bad boy up with your commons put your power in from your 4 to 20 back to it and it tells by the way it's throttling the 4 to 20 milliamps it's 5 milliamps it's this much on that scale of 0 to 500 <clears throat> vice versa okay and you can do the same thing with your output cards this is an analog output like you're trying to control a VFD or something you could take one of these put it over here pretty much oh, <clears throat> do the same thing highlight it put configure same thing get you a data location do not pick the same data location that's very important so you got zero one two three and four remember or three so Pick something else. <clears throat> okay, so now you got five, six, seven, and eight. It's good if you name them that way. You can go right down the line and pick what you want. Okay, signal type. You want to put out a four to twenty milliamp binary. Usually, just put it out in the binary. Anyways, okay, we're gonna move right along. <clears throat> okay, you have that part out of the way. Now, let me show you how to do a quick data on a uh, <clears throat> this is wind IO I'm opening this is for an HMI this is how you program the HMI I don't know if I've even done one of these on one of these videos yet but let me drag it over here on the screen where you can see what's going on <clears throat> Let me see if I can keep this in the video too where you can see it. Something's going on with my big screen here. Oop, too far. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> Now, we want to, on this HMI, this is going to be the actual human machine interface. I want to set up something on here that's going to tell me what that input, that analog input, is reading from that temperature sensor, pressure sensor, whatever it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, first thing we need to do actually is come over here to uh, configuration project. Where'd it go? Project. We gotta set up our communication because if you don't set up communication, it won't even let you talk to the PLC until you set up communication between it. So I'm gonna do Ethernet protocol, external device communication one. So you pick it over here and you come over here and tell it how you're gonna communicate over here. Communication driver one. Come over here, IDEC. All right. You have to check, fix this box down here because that's for 232 or 485. We want to use Ethernet. <clears throat> okay. Communication driver network. 
external device one see it fills in at five I'm going I'm communicating with 192.168.1.5 which is the PLC back here okay <clears throat> click OK all right back home all right then go to data displays numerical display this is where you're getting an input from another device to a display a numerical input is where you're inputting a number out to a device so we're going to use a numerical display open that up <clears throat> double click it okay this is where you set all this up at okay I'll try to explain some of this displays decimal Hexadecimal, that's some stuff that's kind of over my head even a little bit. I always use decimal for numbers because that's what I use. <clears throat> digits, this is how you set how many digits are going to be actually displayed within the itself here. See, we're only going to use three because we have it set to 500. All right. Display floating point. So if you had, say, 12.5 in here 125.6 you'd want to display the floating point we don't have a floating point we're going to, we we want whole numbers <clears throat> okay suppressed zeros is basic if you had a number that said 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 5, you don't want to see the zeros you check that and it gets rid of the zeros uh display device address is where we set this is where it's coming from this is where we tell it we want it to look at that PLC. Right here, instead of micro I, micro I is your HMI. We want to pick external device zero. That's what we have set at our PLC. Okay, data register zero. That's the one we're wanting to read. We're going to read the first one. It was temperature, not the second one. The second one we'd pick two. Okay, and, it all, and once we get done, it'll show you the data register over here. You can go through here and set up the different colors for views. You can change the pictures. You can play with all the colors over here. Um, you can change the format of the fonts, the magnification, how big the fonts are, all that. I'm not going to go into that. That's something y'all can play with on your own. You don't need me showing you all around all that. Okay. So there's, there's your data display. Now let me show you what the numbers do just so you'll show all right, we want to go align text. We want to align it to the center <clears throat> just to make it look better. Style, let's go with bold. Size, let's go on 16 by 16. We'll leave that font like it is. Like font view. Let's see what that looks like. See, that changed it, put it in the center. Things you can play with on here. <clears throat> view. Let's change that to red. That's the ones I like using a lot. Uh, this this magnification, this is your font height. So let's go to a four. See what that does. See, now you have your four. Anyways, that's basically it. See, and if you leave this on, this is something you can do in your views to show your addresses. So if you're programming, you're going between two programs, you know what addresses you're messing with. Messing with. If you do not see this, Go to view and check device address. That's how you make that show up. And when you go to view, all this stuff you check will sh show up on here and tell you that way it helps you go back and forth between the programs. Okay, well, that's it. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, close all this out. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll help if I can. If I can't, I'll tell you I can't, and I'll try to find an answer for you. <clears throat>